Hello and welcome to Mom Talk. I am your host, Crystal Galladay, also known as the Fun Finder for Education. And Mom Talk has been happening for 19 months. I just did the math before we had this episode today. And Mom Talk was created so that us as moms, those who are interested in motherhood and those that support us, have the opportunity to come together and talk about topics that we may think we're going through life by ourselves on, but actually we're not. And the fact that we all have some type of gift. And I wanted to bring and bring those together, people together as well as highlight those who have those gifts and share what they're doing because we can help one another. So this talk show takes place normally every fourth Wednesday of the month. It's gonna be a modification for August. And then also in November, we don't have it um, because I have an event with my nonprofit and in December, we move it up because of the end of year holidays that take place. So you've RSVP, you will be getting the information. And if you haven't, and if you're finding this as a replay somewhere, just make sure that you RSVP so that you can get information for these lovely topics that we have, because I have some awesome guests every month and it's a relevant topic for you, your family and your loved ones and people that you know. So today we are gonna talk about leadership because let's face it, who runs the world? Women. So we have the chief visionary officer of Lead with Letitia here. And she is gonna talk to us about leading within your home, leading within work, and leading everywhere else, because I know if I put the hats up on my head of how many hats and responsibilities I have, we will have like a skyscraper for like one of the buildings for my hometown in New York. So without further ado, I want to introduce Letitia. And Letitia, outside of you being the chief visionary officer, in addition to a mom, can you tell us more about yourself? Yeah, I mean, so of course, mom is my most important job, and that's why we're all here, right, for mom talk. Um, but so a little bit about me. So of course, I am Letitia Roberson. On top of being a mom and leading my company, leading Letitia LLC, I'm also a senior human resources executive for a Fortune 500 company. I'm also a doting, loving wife. Um, I'm also a sister. My big sister is actually on the call. Hey, Kamor. She's not that much bigger. I mean, we're 14 months apart, but she still likes to say she's my big sister. But um, she's on the call. I'm a, a daughter. I'm a friend. I'm a cousin. But I like to consider myself as someone who is building a legacy, um, right? So when I think about like who I am and, and who I want to be and what things I do in life, they all kind of go into that direction. Like what types of things am I doing to build a legacy? Um, you know, a legacy of thought, a legacy of family, a legacy of leadership. So um, that is who I am in a nutshell. And of course I can elaborate on any one of those things, but to start us off, that's a little bit about me. I am born and raised in uh, Maryland, Prince George's County, Maryland. And I currently live in Washington, DC right now, not too far. I literally can walk into Maryland. So, um, you know, still in the DMV area, but, and I actually met Crystal at work. So we both work for the same company. And I think we've known each other for about 10 years now, maybe. It's been a long time. Um, so, you know, thank you for having me on the show and I'm excited. Yes, like it is a lovely bond that we created through work. I was recently talking about you and I was like, yeah, so teachers, is my work bestie and we're also mommy friends and you know just talking about the greatness of what you have to offer so I'm just excited that we're able to do this because we are both entrepreneurs as well as still working for that fortune 500 company working our way there and just doing the great things that we're doing in motherhood and I must just say and take a pause to say how awesome you are in the various capacities that you have in life so i just want to say i appreciate you and i'm happy that we were able to make this happen so i appreciate you too thank you so let's talk about leadership and with you having your business and lead with leticia leticia llc and i've been seeing your videos that you have as well as your speaking engagements and there's a lot of great tips that you have and services that you offer can you start going into some tips that you have for us. And I don't know if you wanna break it down for the different components in our lives, or if you want to just do overall tips, but 
I have my notepad, so I am ready to um, take my notes. So um, if you can do that, and I'm also putting everyone's name in the hat because at the end we are doing a raffle for one lucky live participant. So make sure you stay around. So passing it over to you, Leticia. So one thing that I learned uh, the hard way a really long time ago is for me, like, I don't feel like there's work, work life balance, right? It's all one life. Like you're integrating everything into once. And the more that you try to have all these separate like boundaries around the different parts of your life, it gets a lot harder. So for me, I just have, it's just one thing. Like I'm just me, I'm just who I am. My day is just my day. And I'm very transparent about it. Right. So it's not a secret that I have, you know, leave with Leticia when it comes to work. You know, it's not a secret that, you know, I'm a mom and I have to, you know, my mornings may be iffy because who knows what time I'm going to get back to work for traffic or that I leave at three o'clock or between the two and three thirty every day to go and pick up Penny. Or that, you know, whenever I get a free break, I'm going to hop on my Peloton, right? And that could be a two o'clock, that could be a four o'clock. But I'm always transparent about what I'm doing. Um, so not only at work, like when I'm working, but also, you know, with my family. Right. And I will say that's gotten a lot easier during COVID because we're home a lot more. So I'm not always trying to, you know, balance schedules. So a lot of times it's more so just being aware and, you know, letting my husband know, like, hey, I have this going on on Tuesday. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you going to be home? And I've also just learned how to approach conversations differently, too. Right. Um, a lot of times I was asking for things. Right. Hey do you mind staying at home right, so that I can do this? Or, you know, hey, is it okay if I, you know, leave a little early? And I started to realize that when I'm asking other people for permission, I'm asking myself for permission too. And I need to start owning like what I want to do and what my plans are a bit more. And once I started to do that and just start really telling people like what's going on and what I'm doing and just being transparent about it, it made the integration like all the so much easier because I'm not trying to, you know, like juggle all these things and have all these restrictions and being stuck in a box, you know, as it relates to what I'm doing. So for me, transparency was key when it comes to leadership at home, in the office, you know, at activities. Oh, and y'all, I resigned from the PTA today. It was the best feeling ever <laughs> because I was, that's one of those things where I just read this book called Drop the Ball. And one of the things she talks about is, you know, when you understand, like, what things you have to do to do things to keep delegate. And Whitney's going to the second grade, and I have been doing the PTA for, she's been in that same home for five years, right? Um, so, and I have been doing the PTA for almost four, and I'm like, I just can't do it anymore. Like, I don't have the capacity, and I have made my contribution, right? I, I did it for a very long time. I was great at what I did, and I'm at a place now where I can transition into somebody else. And I know that it's going to be great. But for me, like just saying that and checking that off my list and saying, oh, I did that. I'm not doing that anymore. It just was a sense of relief because now I feel like I have some more free time, <laughs> you know, going into the new school year. So that's another activity that I can, you know, check off the box where I have more time to focus on leave with Patricia in the evenings because, you know, I'm not doing PTA executive meetings on Tuesdays. And I'm not going to the actual meetings like every third Thursday, right? Or I'm not, you know, constantly communicating with parents. Like I just was like, Whew, yes, I can stop that now. So it's just all about transparency. And I told them that too, like, hey, I gave y'all, you know, a good four years. So, <laughs> you know, it's time. It's time for me to transition and do something else. And some of y'all may need blood in there, but, you know, just things like that. But I'm always transparent, like no matter what, about what I'm doing. Um, and that's helped a lot when it comes to leadership in all areas of life. We have PTA. I, I see some people from my school and, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of responsibility. So I'm happy that you spoke up and you know your bandwidth. And I think that's a term like we've, we've heard a lot with work and stuff like that. And some people don't assess it. It just kind of say yes. And I used to be a yes person where I used to say yes to everything. And because I was a people pleaser. Now, like no is a, a full blown on sentence. Like, And you don't have to explain why you're saying no, right? Like you don't have to be like, you know what? No, that you could just say no. You don't have to say why you can't do it. You can, oh, I have other commitments. Oh, you could just say no. Like that just does not work for my schedule. And that's okay. And I know a couple of weeks ago, I did a post about that too. Like we as women, right? A lot of times we're apologizing because we feel like we're inconveniencing people, you know, by saying no. 
Um, you know, no, I can't do that. I'm really sorry. Why? Like, why are you sorry? It just doesn't work. Offer up some time to work for you instead. So instead of saying, you know, I'm sorry, that time doesn't work for me, just say, you know what? Here are some times that do work for me. Right? Like, we have to stop apologizing for the facts, right? That's just a fact. It's the fact that that time doesn't work for you. Or it's the fact that you don't want to do that. And you don't have to explain to people why not. And a lot of times that diminishes, you know, our leadership when we feel like we have to explain ourselves when we make decisions. We have to make decisions or we have to tell people what it is and we have to be confident in it. And that's it. Right? So that would be another tip too, right? Like, when own your nose. No, I can't do it. You can say it nicely. You can nicely say, I uh, know I'm unavailable, right? But leave it at that. You don't have to explain why you're unavailable and you don't have to apologize for being unavailable. And I know for me, one of my mentors from when I was coming back from maternity leave, she was a mom and she told me that you have to set your parameters because let's think about it. Other people, and we were talking about work, but really other people, including our children, They'll take as much away from you, not away from you as in a sense, they're trying to take it away from you, but they'll request as much as they can from you that you're going to give. So I know we've heard the saying of like, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? So you want to drink from the cup first and then share with others opposed to trying to just give, 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 give. Um, And that's why I'm glad you talked about capacity and, and the fact that you set your boundaries because that has some, been something I had to learn over time. Mm-hmm. And it's been very powerful yeah. to, to learn that and to express what they are. Your kids will try you too, right? <laughs> and as much as you want to be able to give them the time and attention that they need, they also need to understand that, you know, sometimes mommy has other things that she's doing and sometimes mommy needs that time too or no mommy can't do this, and they have to be okay with it. And I think that, you know, I don't have teenagers. I know there are some people in the phone that do have teenagers, but as they get older, as Cindy gets older, I hope it gets easier for her to understand when I say no to her, and it's not just a disappointment. Um, so that's something that I need to work on, too, is when I am unavailable, for whatever reason, right, just being sure that I am reinforcing that I don't, I can, I'm not going to say to her, like, no, and that's it, because she's, going on seven, right? So I may have to uh, explain to her why not, right? I'm okay with doing that with my kid, but not, I'm not okay with doing that with somebody at work, right? Or I'm not okay with doing that with, you know, another parent of PTA, or I'm not okay with doing that, you know, with someone from, you know, a group that I'm in, like, I'm just not. So again, it kind of goes to understanding, like, who your audience is, but, you know, for a kid, yes, I may have to explain, you know, all those, a lot of us were taught, like, because I said so, <laughs> Like we, I, I know I grew, grew up in that generation where it was like, you know, parents told you no, just like, because I say so. But now kids are smarter. Like if you say to a kid, because I said so, they're like, well, why are you saying so? Right? Like I need an explanation. <laughs> and that's when I'm like, okay, you got me, right? Okay, here's your explanation. But only with kids, not, not in other environments, I would say. And with children, we have to think about it. They're learning from us how to communicate and how to be a human being. Yeah. So- I definitely agree with explaining to an extent so that they understand and that they can know the reasoning, but then also be able to make their own cognitive decisions. When yeah, she, she must have I was talking about it because she's here with me. I knew she was going to make a pop up in appearance. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. You already knew. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I know in the comments, some people were talking about comfortability, right? I've learned in the workout days, because um, I'm a wellness coach as well, but um, with that, I've learned you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? When it comes to the change that you want in life, because the change is going to happen when you're doing something that you're not used to doing, or you're continually doing that thing, not insanity, but doing that thing towards that change. So Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable at first, and it may feel a little weird, but get this, that sting it may have to someone with you saying no initially is going to be a longer term respect for you, and then also you're going to feel better when you are doing something for yourself opposed to trying to please someone just because you wanted to say yes and you didn't want them to be mad at you. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things I just don't want to do. (laughs) 
when someone will ask you, like, hey, do you, and I'm just like, no, I don't, right? Like, hey, do you mind doing this? I, yeah, I can't do that, right? I mean, sometimes we just, especially with their work, it, like, you don't have to take on everything. And I had to learn hard way and work too. Like you said, like, I felt like I had to prove myself. And so every assignment that came my way or every plus one that came my way, I felt like I had to take it, even though I may not have been passionate about it or I may not have been the best at it, right? But I'm like, okay, I've been given this opportunity. Let me do it. But I've had to stop doing that too because we take on so much sometimes and it may not be for the best, especially if it's something that we don't enjoy doing or it's the people that you have to work with. You know, <laughs> you know that, like you have to get comfortable you know, this just saying no and not taking on everything that comes your way because you feel like you have to, right? Um, and that I talk a lot about that too, how we feel like we have to because if we don't do it, somebody else is gonna do it. Okay, let somebody else do it. Like right? they may want to do it and they may do a better job at it. You know, someone asked me to be on a committee and it was about I forget what it was like community they wanted me to be on the communications committee. And I said, no, I can't do the communications committee, but I would love to do the executive development committee, right? Do you have room on that committee? So I'm saying no, but I'm also offering another option. Like, sure, I would love to help you out, but not in that capacity, but I would love to help you out in this capacity. So a lot of times when I say no, I can offer an option and I do sometimes too. So that's a way too, if you feel guilty about saying no, you can offer an option. You can recommend somebody else that may be able to do this or, you know, you offer up yourself to do something else or say, hey, come back to me in two weeks, right? I don't have the bandwidth now, but, you know, check back with me in two weeks. So if you feel bad about saying no and that makes you guilty, you can offer up other solutions. Now, you're not explaining yourself. You're still not explaining why you're saying no, but you're just offering up another solution. So. I like that. And the fact that and Denise brought up a good point with the quarantine, being able to reset and, and say no to things that gave us a reason to say no. I feel like with things opening back up, even though I feel like we may shut down sometime soon. Um, it is a lot of things back to back. Like I was even telling somebody recently, like my Sundays used to be chill days. I didn't plan no speaking engagements, no parties, no nothing on Sunday, but now like Sunday is becoming busy. And I'm like, I can see that people are like trying to do as much they, as they can now. And that's me included. Cause I love the summertime, but I don't want us to lose what we've gain during the strict quarantine time frame with the introspectiveness that we had with the preservation and the restoration that we had so that's a reminder to you all and a reminder to me um because this mom talk is just as much as i'm delivering to you all and the speakers are delivering to you i'm intaking a lot of that information as well because i'm human and and i'm a work in progress so I'm taking it all in. And I love the fact that I have powerful people in my network, like Letitia and a lot of people in the audience and people who will be watching this too, that we can be the checks and balances for one another. Because mm -hmm. I've, even, I've even had some of my mommy friends be like, okay, well, you can't do it all. Like, let I mean, me I told you that before too, for sure. Like, what else can you take on? And I mean, I like I know that there was another thing that I loved doing, like the Fit Mommy Challenge, and I tried it, but I was like, I just can't do it this year. I don't have the capacity because now you know Sydney's back in dance, she's back in gymnastics. So literally Monday, Wednesday, Friday evenings, I'm doing that with her. So I can't do the workouts. And you know, in the morning time, like I'm rushing to do this and that, and now I'm doing a lot of stuff with my business in the morning. Mm -hmm. so I don't have the time in the morning because I'm doing Letitia stuff in the morning before I pivot into, you know, nine to five Letitia. So a lot has just changed and I'm starting to do things differently, but it's for what I want to do, right? Those are things that I want to do. And I'm still getting my workouts and don't get me wrong, but the schedule just didn't work for me this time around. So I couldn't do it. And I was okay with it. I mean, I tried and I was like, you know what, y'all, like, I just, I can't do it this year. I'm still supporting, right? Like I'm still on the package. But because I still want to support the business, but I'm just, I can't do it this year. And for me, like, I, I do say this, but I can't say it enough. Like, this pandemic has helped me just, like, reset and really be like, no, and really start to assess, like, the amount of bandwidth and time that I have to do things that don't benefit me directly, right? Um, so it has been just, it's been amazing just to be able to say and really look at my calendar now and just think about all the time, too, and that a lot of people's lives are just changed just because they're not commuting, 
Like they're not in the car or on the train for an hour and a, and a half. So your quality of life is so much different. Now you can actually sit down and you can have breakfast. You can drink your coffee while it's hot, right? You can, you know, get home at a decent hour and you can cook a meal. Like you can see your, you know, your partner, your significant other leaving them. Like it's just, it's changed. And I hope that a lot of things that have changed due to the pandemic actually stay that way. But, you know, like for me, that just said, I mean, I worked from home, but I still had a commute, you know, to school and some other places. But I hear so many people talk about how their quality of life has changed so much with the pandemic and not having to commute and do all the running back and forth that happened. And I know a lot of us are ready to just get back at it, but some of us are like, I plan to keep it this way. Like, I want to stay doing the things that I've done and maintain the changes that I had to make for the good um, to really help us really think about ourselves and focus on ourselves a bit more. I mean, I don't know about, but I've definitely been able to do that more um, with the pandemic. So I'm embracing it. No, for real. I am too. And I'm happy that I don't have to travel um, because that, I felt like I was on autopilot where I didn't even need the directions to the school. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, wow, I'm there. And it's like, my mind is other places. And um, I've just been enjoying the fact of not having to travel and be in traffic. But I will say this, I'm hoping that companies realize that they don't need butts and seats um, for everything. Like, yes, there'll be some things because I've been on the consulting side a lot where it's like clients they're paying for people and they want to see them and I get that you want to make sure the work is being done but I I feel like business models are changing a little bit with them realizing that people can still get their work done from home and granted some people may want to get out their house and and get the work done um because (laughs) I I, I do miss it I mean even though I was working from home pretty pre-pandemic I've been working from home for almost six years now but I still had like my days in the office I would go to the office you know at least once a month and I would have no meeting schedule because I would just see me I'm just kikiing around the office the whole time <laughs> or I'm having lunch with co-workers or and I'm still this way it's really starting back up but I was a serial lunch meeting person right like I love the freedom of working home and being able to just like go out and meet a friend for lunch or meet a colleague for lunch or even just popping into like the local coffee shop and working there in the morning. So once I dropped Sydney off at school, instead of going back home, I would go to the coffee shop right up the street and I would just sit down and I would plug in there. And it was just a change of scenery. Like those types of things I absolutely miss doing um, because it was still, even though I worked from home, I still got out. Like I still was able to get out and, and do things where I'm still working, right? And like you said, like the nature of a lot of our work, we can pretty much work anywhere. I mean, I had a coworker who rented an Airbnb in Hawaii for six months, the pandemic, and she was like, I'm going to go to Hawaii. And she literally would, every time she would come on the Zoom, she would be on the beach. But what can you say, right? Like she's working, she's getting her work done. She's on Zoom calls. What does it matter if she's on the beach, right? Like she's working. So I see a lot of companies who are doing that and being a lot more flexible. But then there are other ones. I know a lot of people who are, you know, in law firms and other places that are back in the office. And they've been back in the office for months now. Um, So I think it just really depends on your industry. But I also think that we, right, as employees and, you know, as people who have to work, we need to speak up too, right? Like if we want to say, hey, I want to work from home one or two days a week you've proven that you can do it. So why not, right? Why can't there be some flexibility around it? So yeah, they may want you to come in three days a week, but why can't you do two days? So don't, a lot of people should act. Like if that's a thought that you have, you definitely should ask because you have the case. I mean, you've done it for 18 months. So what's wrong with working from home two days a week? And a lot of times we should think about like when we're looking at new jobs and you know we're going into new roles, those are the types of perks that we should ask for, right? Like a lot of times we're thinking salary, 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 but salary doesn't always contribute to your quality of life. Now, being able to work from home two days a week, we can get some laundry done. We might be able to, like, I doubt if they say, no, we, we can't give you a raise. You're like, okay, well, can you give me two days at home? So like, that's another tip too. Like there are other ways that you can negotiate, like increases, like if you're changing your job, or you want a job title or you, some type of rewards for that 
there's a different ways that you can ask about it. It could be more time off. It could be working from home. It could be, you know, I don't travel benefits. I don't know. But there are so many other ways that you can enhance your compensation when it comes to like your work than, you know, just asking for a salary or a raise because like working from home two days a week could bring more quality of life and you save the money anyway, right? From those two days that you're commuting. So I just want people to think outside the box when they are, you know, negotiating, you know, different salaries or contracts within your business or different things. And that's a key thing that you can ask for now because the business case is pretty much there. So if that's something that you've been wanting to do, make sure that you try to negotiate that into returning to work. I love that because I did that when, you remember how much time I took off when I had my prints? I learned the policies and then I asked Mm -hmm. for like additional time. Like I was like, okay, this is the time that maternity leave is. Um, I know this policy, you can, you know, stay out longer for whatever reasons. I want, what is the maximum amount of time that I could request at one time? (laughs) And I requested and it was like, if you need more time, then you re-up on that time. But you also, I want to stress, learning the ins and outs of what's associated with different policies. Like with that additional time, it didn't have benefits. It didn't have pay, but I already saved that up because I have my external stuff and then also have my husband. So just, that's what I'm saying, learn different things and also network. Like with, I've started in a new sector of business within our firm and I met one person in a meeting and they're like, oh, well, you should speak to this person, that person, and that person for di- different reasons and this and that. And guess what? I'm setting meetings up with them so I can learn about this part of business that's new to me. And then so that I could build those relationships and know how to work around it. And then even with coming back from maternity leave, my mentor was telling me to set my boundary. So even before the whole work from home was like super popular across the board, I was requesting work from from home. I was requesting certain hours, even the days I went in to be in work because of traffic and stuff like that, just simply because that helped me with my sanity, that helped me with my productivity. And it's like, we were able to negotiate. And I feel like sometimes we like to accept what's given to us where if we ask, and I know I tried to negotiate when I started with the firm and they didn't accept my negotiation, even though my dad was like, he worked all his life for the salary I started with as an engineer. And, you know, I at least asked and I knew Mm -hmm. what it was. And then if I wanted to work towards getting that, yes, what it took. So you know what you need in your life and you know what's best for your family. So just make sure you are getting that and asking. And that's how you can lead in all places, right? So making sure that you're being an advocate like for yourself and for your family. So it could be, you know, advocating for your child, you know, or what your child needs at school or, you know, in rehearsal, it could be advocating for your team, right? Like I'll give you a prime example. I wanted to, there was, I, I built a new team about you know six or seven months ago and there was someone who was an integral part of that right like she it was just me and her when we first started um and she like really helped me build the team and I wanted to put her up for promotion but I didn't ask her if that was what she wanted right like and you know once I started to talk to her about it I I mean I we kind of got to the place where she was like, well, I, I hadn't really thought about it, right? And what would that entail? Like, explain to me what that would entail. So here I am, you know, like trying to be an advocate for her and getting her to the next level when I wasn't even sure if that was what she wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I'm always like thinking that way, like how can I elevate my people? How can I be leaders for my people? But then that also was an aha moment for me because I said, you know what, I'm I'm trying to do what I think is best for her, but I haven't even talked to her yet to figure out like what she wants to do. I mean, and in hindsight, like we talked about it and she felt like she wasn't ready. She probably needed another year or so. And I was like, you know what, you absolutely are. But so we worked on that, but we have to have those conversations. And that comes to not just with people we work with, but at home, right? Like you may want your kid to do something, but they may not want to do it. <laughs> and as parents are like, oh, you're going to do it. But you know, we have to be better at talking to, you know, the people in our lives or we have visions for them or expectations for them or we have this bright idea that we want to do something for them. We just need to make sure that that's what they want and that's what's the best for them. I know a lot of times as women, like, we are always trying to help people and we're like, I want to do this. I want to get them the best place. And I'm, and that thought came to me when you 
talking about like networking, introducing people. Because for me, like that is something that I pride myself on too, right? Is making those introductions and saying, oh, hey, you want to get, you're interested in engineering. Let me introduce you to a crystal. You know, hey, you're, inter- you're interested in education. Oh, let me introduce you to something. Like that is something that I, I pride myself in, right? But then I also understand too that before I introduce this person to Crystal, let me make sure Crystal has the bandwidth to talk to her, right? Because what I would hate to do is to send somebody to Crystal and then Crystal goes to them or Crystal's like, oh, you know, I can't really talk to you right now. Which right? won't happen, but, you know. Oh, that will happen. But, you know, it does happen sometimes, right? So, you know, one of the things that I'm going to be talking about next month too is like, how do you make the proper introduction, right? Like people are always talking about like building a network, building a network, but you know, if I'm introducing somebody to Shonda, I need to make sure Shonda's okay with it. And I need to, you know, make sure that before I do that, that I'm making the proper handoff. Like I'm setting some context because so often, a lot of times when we're networking with people, I'm like, hey, you know what? You need to go talk to Tanya. And then the person goes and they just send Tanya a LinkedIn message and like, hey, Tanya, and she just said, I connect with you. And Tanya's like, you know, like connect with you about what? So, you know, I, I talk a lot too about like building your network. And that's one of the things that I really like just hold in on a lot is like how to do that, how to appropriately do that and how to sustain those relationships because it's important to introduce people, but the way that you introduce them speaks volumes and you can't just hand somebody off. Like there has to be a conversation. You have to say, I support this person or whatever the case may be. But, you know, as women and as leaders, we should be doing that, right? We should be making sure that we're introducing people and that we're building our networks. And that's not, I mean, that's at work, that's at home, you know, that's within our friendship circles, that's within our mommy trap. I mean, that's everywhere. Like we should be making sure that we are expanding our network and introducing people. And that is a part of leadership too, like leading the way, like leading somebody to another person that's gonna help them get to where they wanna be. So I'm always doing that. Like I'm like the queen of introductions. So, (laughs) you know, that's one way that I make sure that I I continue to be in all avenues of life. Yeah, and I wanna say to the audience, don't be stingy with your introductions. Like you never know what, even a share or like such and such, Chantel, this is Katia or Denise, this is Nadej or something like that. And just have a brief like idea or like a specialization of this person is great at this. And I thought you should connect on this topic. And I did this with someone in the audience recently. Another thing I want to mention is understand that best mode of communication for that individual you're introducing. Like you mentioned LinkedIn, where that person may not be on LinkedIn and somebody reached out to them. And uh, you want to also make sure like you're not giving out super personal information if they're not okay with that. So with this particular situation, I connected via email because that person gave me their cell phone number, but I'm like, I didn't feel comfortable. I don't give out people's cell phone numbers unless I check in and be like, okay, you good with me doing this? I want to connect you like, because that's that whole bandwidth and that's that personal, you know, line, which everybody doesn't get to, but that person ended up getting a cell phone number from them connecting, which was great, but you just never know what your simple introduction right no cell phone numbers so you just never know what your introduction can lead to because as I mentioned earlier everyone has their gift that they can contribute in some type of way to someone else and your gift can just simply be an introduction and that goes into knowing what your surroundings are and as I mentioned policies and stuff like that so I do want to open it up to any questions but I want to see if you had any more tips or if you want to summarize the tips that you have Yeah, I mean, I think we, for me, like someone said to me, a mentor said to me a couple months ago, actually, she was like, I don't want to be superwoman. (laughs) Like, she's like, so I'm not going to wear the cake because I'm not supposed to wear it. Like, I'm not trying to be superwoman. And because there was, we were talking and somebody was like, well, I can't be superwoman all the time. And she was like, well, I'm not superwoman. I don't want to be superwoman. I'm just me. And that resonated with me so much because I was like, I don't want to be superwoman right like I just want to be me I want to be Letitia and I want to do what works for me what works best for my family without feeling like it's a superpower to do it right and a lot of times we talk about like what are our superpowers and I get it I love that acronym like a lot of times when I'm in my strategy sessions with people I ask them like so what is your superpower right like but your superpower doesn't mean you have to be like super mom right? Like you don't have to be super woman. So you don't have to be any and all things that come your way. You don't have to always save the world. Like you don't have to be super. 
So when I think about, you know, how we can be leaders in life, just in general, whether it's as a parent, whether it's as, you know, a supervisor, whether it's as, you know, a friend, like you don't have super, we don't have superpowers and you don't have to be superwoman. We just do the best we can, right? And people like, I'm doing me, doing the best I can. Like, I just, I take that, like, I, I take that literally. Like, I'm just doing me, I'm doing me, I'm doing the best and I'm not superwoman and I'm not trying to be superwoman. Just trying to do the best I can and put forth the best effort. So those would be my, my parting words. Awesome. So how can everyone keep in contact with you? So what's your preferred way of communication and what's next from Letitia and Leave with Letitia? So I am really big on LinkedIn and um, not as big on Instagram. I'm trying to get there. So if you follow me on Instagram, then you see that I'm starting to post a little bit more. But so um, my handle on Instagram is Leave with Letitia. So L-E-A-D. W-I-T-H-L-A-T-I-S-H-A and put it back. Um, and then by my name, Leticia M. Robeson on Instagram, but then I also have a Leave with Leticia page too. That I'm starting to build. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I actually started Leave with Leticia is because I felt like my brand had become very attached to like my corporate job and my corporate function. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, my thought leadership was mine. And it wasn't connected to them in all spaces. And I was doing so much and I was being asked to do so much. And it was because of me as a person and not because of who I worked for, what I did at that company. So that's how I started it. So if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, I'm trying to get some more followers on my LinkedIn page. I mean, I'm in the thousands of my personal page, but I'm trying to get there with me so I can start posting more there. But those, that's how you can find me. And I also have a website. So leadwithleticia.com. So in the recap email, we'll have all that information so that those who have ever RCP for a mom talk, they would get that information and know those three ways, which are LinkedIn, Instagram, and your website, all right? Yeah, absolutely. And what's next? So I'm actually working on a webinar, um, which I'm hoping to launch in October, which is my birthday month. So I am um, going to create a webinar that is going to be available for people to take on their own. Um, so more to come about that, but that's like the big what's next. I have a few speaking engagements coming up in August. Um, and then I also have two new strategy clients um, that I'm taking on in August because I have freed up some of my bandwidth with not doing the PTA. <laughs> um, Sydney is rolling off of some of her dance stuff. So, um, you know, I have my capacity is opening up going to fall season. So I'm excited. Um, so connect with me. Super excited to hear more about your big speaking engagement and your strategy clients. And I know you're going to hit the ball out the park with them. So congrats. Thank you. So let's open the floor up to any questions that people may have. If you do have a question, feel free to come off of mute or put it in the chat. If you have any. Hi. Sorry, this is Tanya. I have one question. My question is, how do you, I guess, get comfortable saying no to family versus friends? Because I feel like for me, my struggle is my family. It's very hard for me to say no to them. That's one and two, and saying no without giving a reason. So I'm wondering, like, how do you set those boundaries between the two? I think my family pretty much knows what they can ask me and what I'm going to say yes to and what I'm going to probably say no to by, you know, just um, history. Because like you said, it took me a while to sort of get there, you know, for a while. Like I always wanted to, you know, feel like I was doing right, you know, by my family. So whenever there was something that was a request of a family, I would do it. But then I got to a point where I noticed that I was doing, doing, doing. And a lot of times, like, I was like, what am I getting in return, you know? And not that, you know, it's, it's bad things, but, you know, a lot of times when your capacity starts to get limited, like, okay, yes, I can do this for you seven years ago, but can't really do that for you right now. Um, or, yeah, I may have been able to lend you this, you know, five years ago, but I'm not really into lending that money right now. Whatever the case may be, 
Um, I think I, I'm pretty clear about the types of things that you can and you can't ask me for, um, but it's really based off of experience, right? So for me, I can answer, I can say no, because I've done something before and it didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. Or, you know, I can say no, because I've done that already. So I've already, maybe you should ask this question. So it goes back to, if you're going to say no, I don't know how large your family is, but maybe there's somebody else that you could suggest that they ask. Or maybe instead of saying no, you offer them another option depending on what it is, right? So you help them think through a solution so you can't do it or you can't help, but here's a way that you can do it. And then they'll stop asking you. Like once you start saying no, they'll be like, you know what, Tanya's not, she's not doing that anymore. I would say just practice on, instead of just let out saying no, offering other options um, to them. I think that's the way that you can start. And I wanted to add to that, also empower them to get that answer for themselves. Like I know when you talk about the money situation, I had a, somebody in the family ask you for money and I was like, well, how did it get to this? Like, how can we prevent from this happening another time? And they, they got frustrated and said, forget it. But that, that was kind of like, it stopped them from continually asking me because it was like, let's think about this. Like we're, I'm working and I'm doing what I need to do for my particular sake um, in regards to my family, not just fun to you and your family. So let's work on this. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that really helps. Just to open in the line of communication and you don't always have to explain why your no is, but just you understand the personality of your family to know how you should handle a situation. So I'm glad you um, think it was good tips and good information. Thank you, Tanya. I know Kamora wants to, has a question. So I'm going to add you and feel free to come off of mute, Kamora. You girls are doing a good job tonight, I will say. I'm Tisha's older sister, not the one asking for money. <laughs> my camera is off because I didn't already wash my face and everything. So I'm not going to scare anyone. But this, okay, so here are my takeaways. And this is what I practice too. Like, I have plans and you are like, not the babysitter, you're my husband, you're his father. Like, we share this. So this is going on your calendar. So use, I just put it on his calendar. Like, we share a calendar. So we have a calendar and the baby has a calendar and like, we can see where everyone, what everyone's doing because it's not only me. And you know, and for me, like I'm a stay at home mom. So I'm with him all day and I'm the one like doing the drop off and the pick up and after school activities and PTA vice president and diversity chair and everything else. So like if it's Thursday night and I want to pop out with my friends, you gonna know. And then the other takeaway was just the no part for me. Like I'm not a people's person, I'm a people pleaser and, um, it's easy for me to say no, but it's not easy for me to say no without why I'm saying no. So if it's like my son or my husband or my friends or like my mommy friends or someone I'm working with, I'm going to say no, but I'm going to say why I'm saying no. So I think I need to get to the point where it's just like, no. So that's what I have to like work on. And then, um, was it another point? I'll think about it. Then I'll come back if so. Yeah, when you were about to say you're not a people person i was like what you no, no. like I, I am, very friendly I, I and biggest, i appreciate that <laughs> no i am the biggest extrovert and i am definitely a people person i have like i'm very social and i'm a great communicator but for me like it's just hard to say no and not say why i'm saying no because i don't want to disappoint anyone or make anyone like sad or upset so that's that's hard for me yeah, yeah. Now I've been learning from the both of you because um, I know we have our mommy chat and we've just been connecting on different levels. So thank you all for sharing with me. I feel like I am a part of the family as well. <laughs> yes, girl, my workout, my workout partner, my sweat <laughs> sister. <laughs> yes, yes, I appreciate you both. But I'm glad you decided to speak up because you do have a lot of good methods that you have been using as well. And um, you do make sure that you have your me time and just, just know I've, I've seen you without makeup clean face you're beautiful so. <laughs> thank you because <laughs> yeah when you stay when you stay at home I think like people don't understand that like it's definitely harder and more work to be at home than to be at work 
And so they feel like they can ask you to constantly be doing stuff and expect you to always be available. And I'm like, no, y'all don't understand. Like I am busy from like the moment I drop them off to the moment I pick them up most of the time. And maybe if I'm not working, I'm still you know, doing, I'm doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you, Denise girl. Amen from Denise. <laughs> yes. Snaps. <laughs> I definitely understand. Thank you so much, Kamara. We appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, I would say I used to be that person. Like, I wasn't the, you know what, I'm doing this, so you just need to be home. Like, that wasn't me. It took me a while to get there because I just felt like, oh, God. like, it would be one of these, like, okay, no, wait, I got to ask him for this. No, no, no. Like, just, and I'm, I mean, Kamara said to me before, like, oh, just tell him and just, or just go. Like, I'm like, I can't just leave the house, but... <laughs> It definitely took me a while to get there. So just like Tanya, you're saying, like, how do you say no? It got me a while to get to a place where I'm like, this is what I'm doing, right? Like, it took me a while to get there. Probably, like, maybe been the last two years, but it's definitely harder, you know, when you have, uh, when you feel like you got, you can't just go. You got to get to that place. So it's, it's, it's hard. And then that conversation needs to be had. Like, I think once we had that conversation, then it became, like, so much more easier for me or to not do it, but for me to be empowered to just make it happen, so. And I would say it even took me longer to really utilize the help that I have in the house. Like I was operating at some points as a single mom and I had like friends like Letitia, Kamora, and some other friends like, listen, like you have a husband in the house. Like you shouldn't be doing all of that. Just tell him, just ask him, like open up your mouth. And I'm like, but, but. but you know, that's the thing. they won't know until you tell them like you're operating that way. So they don't feel like they need to do anything extra or, you know, like if you don't ask them to help, they feel like you got it. And that's because we're trying to be superwoman. So we are, we're trying to do everything, but you don't have to like, listen, if you think eventually he's going to put them in a dishwasher. <laughs> About that part, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my sink. I mean, I said it earlier, but uh, mine's ain't loaded like, dishwasher. I'll tell you that. <laughs> like, like any relationship, you have to communicate because people have to learn how to treat you and how to work with you. Um, so it's definitely a partnership in parenting and just work and having a team and stuff like that. And one other thing I had to learn the hard way, and Shonda, we're gonna come to you, is that with work. You're not going to like everybody that you work with. I thought I was going to be buddy, buddy with everyone, but I learned the hard way. So just know you're there for a job. You get it done. Be cordial and try to leave work at work. I know it's sometimes easier said said than done. So thank you, Kamora, for coming to this stage and speaking. So Shonda, I know you have your hands up. How maybe help you and what question or additional thing you want to add to the discussion? Hello, ladies. I hope you can hear me well. Um, I just wanted to comment that the the no, the being able to say no and not giving a why. I learned not that long ago (laughs) that my priorities are my priorities. And I respect myself enough to say no and to not have to give the why. And it's uncomfortable. In my job, we, we do say, you know, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable and to have that courageous conversation. And I found very recently that that courageous conversation was with myself. Um, I recently underwent something very major in my life and I had to learn to definitely set my boundaries, but to set them with myself and that parlayed into setting them with work and being a leader at work and demonstrating to my team that I lead that it's okay. Um, very recently, just today, I got an email that someone wanted me to do something, and it's not on my radar. It was not on my boss's radar, and I had to make an executive decision for myself, and looking at my list of priorities for the next month at my job, things that I had to take on personally, and the answer was just no. She asked a question. She asked me to do something, and I had to simply say, you know, no, that's not going to work for me, but thank you for offering, and I left it very much at that. Now, I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but that's tomorrow, (laughs) and I just had to be okay with that, so if I can share anything with the ladies, I would say you, your priorities are yours, whether you are a mom working out of the house, in the house, holding down three jobs, married. I'm, I'm a divorcee, and I'm okay with that, and I still have to say no. Um, My no is getting stronger day by day. Um, 
my family knows that they can ask me almost anything and I will do it for them. But it doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to hear my mouth about it. Um, I'm a person that likes to avoid confrontation. Um, but, you know, it, it, sometimes you just have to, you know, face it, deal with it. It's uncomfortable. But you, I think you get strong enough every day that those no's become much easier. They became much easier with my 12-year-old daughter. She understands that when mommy says no to something and I don't give an explanation, she has to trust that my no is for the greater good of us both. Well, I'm, I'm still working on it. Gets easier. <laughs> easier. That's what I, was, I know there are people who have older kids, so I'm glad to know that the no's get easier because now it's just like, well, why? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. So, they, yeah, yeah, they get easier. There's still some of that. There's still going to be that the older they get and your explanations at times, um, they, they become different, but I think it's a level of trust. And I would say that that can carry over into all relationships. Individuals, they begin to trust you. They trust that your no means something for you and they just have to leave it there. Yeah. I feel that. And congratulations on stepping up and speaking up for yourself. Like that's you, you have to be your biggest advocate. So I'm happy that you did that and happy that you share your experience. Thank you. No problem. So I wanted to do two things because I don't see other people that have questions. There's been a lot of comments, a lot of support. I see we have one more, one more question. Oh, oh, yes, the hand just got raised. So Nadej, welcome to the stage. I mean, welcome you so that you can come on and feel free to unmute yourself with the mic. Excellent. Good evening, ladies. Um, I wanted to share uh, an empowering um, antidote that happened to me. I've, my nose, it's still a work in progress with family, but with work, I used to work at um, a big law firm in New York and, you know, trial after trial on the litigation side, trial after trial, working crazy hours, you know, 70, 80 hours a week sometimes. And one of my bosses literally was like, I need you to go in. It was a snowstorm in New York. I need you to go in and do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, no one else is going in. Well, you live close enough to the office to go do this. So I was like, no, no, that, no, I'm not doing it. So he continues to call me like every hour. And then finally I'm like, okay, fine. I take an hour and 45 minutes to get to the office in the snow, the buses weren't running, the trains were delayed practically walked halfway there and I get there and the project wasn't even urgent. He just wanted somebody in the office. And I was like, listen, I'm, I'm actually billing for this entire, for my commute here because no one's here and I'm billing for my commute back. And he's, I was like, why did you actually need me to come into the office? And he's like, well, I just wanted somebody in the office and I knew you wouldn't say no. And that was my aha moment. And I was like, oh, you knew, so he knew that he could call me every hour until I finally said yes. And from that moment on, I said, my no needs to mean no. And I need to stand by it so that, you know, other supervisors or other people that I'm working with know that they can't just wear me down until I say yes. So in, my, in the workplace, my no does mean no. I'm still working on family. <laughs> But I just wanted to share that with everyone. <laughs> All the work in progress. So that's <laughs> Dad, Leticia, are you going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you, sometimes you just have to do that because, like, if you don't say no, people will keep doing it because you haven't done it before. So now you have set that boundary and he knows and everybody else knows that you're not the one. You're not coming to the office and you don't need to be there and you're not doing things that you don't want to do. A lot of times something has to happen where you have to set that boundary. And people have to see it and they have to know it. So yes, I commend you for that. And now he knows and he will never ask you again. And, and that's one thing I said earlier about the world taking from you and, and you pouring from an empty cup. Like that's one of the reasons why I like like waking up early to have my me time. Like I'm going to be jumping 6.15 in the morning tomorrow for this challenge. Um, but I have accountability people because it's like, I know that's something that's going to feed my soul. That's going to give me that natural high to start my day. And it's one thing checked off my box, which is a huge accomplishment. It's like 2,500 jumps. So pray for me, y'all. Um, Cause you see what time we will be getting off of this. And, and I'm watching a show, 
or something as my down. Call me around 630. Mm. Yeah, so so on that note, like um just make that time for you and Leticia had a whole lot of great tips and also those that came to the stage to ask their questions and to add tips. And um, what I like to do here at Mom Talk, um, because as you know, it's a community, right? And I want to make sure that we are all, you know, supporting one another in, in one way or another. So I definitely want to thank Leticia and lead with Leticia as her being a Chief Visionary Officer for sharing her expertise with us today about leading within the home, within work, and other places. And I do want to do like a round robin to see if anyone else has anything going on that they want others to know about and or support. Like for example, the next Mom Talk episode is going to be not the fourth Wednesday of August. It's going to be Wednesday, August 18th. And the reason why it's not the fourth Wednesday of the month is because I want to enjoy the break between camp and school. And I just want to have nothing to do during that time. So it's going to be Wednesday, August 18th, and it's um, an author, Michelle Knight, but she's going to be talking about sexual assault and the signs we need to look at in regards to our youth um, because she was sexually assaulted when she was young. So I know it's a touchy topic, and we talk about all topics here at Mom Talk, and the next topic will be more about invention and entrepreneurship. So I'm having different topics each month so if you are interested in being a guest on mom talk or you know someone who will be a great person or if you have a topic that you want to be discussed let me know because mom talk is here for us as moms those who support us and those interested in motherhood so that we have that community and also share our expertise so on that note i want to see if anyone else has anything going on that they want to share and yes denise you can come off the mic and share what you would like to share. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Denise, and I started a new um, small business, um, and I will be launching my back to school shirts um, for kids, teachers, whoever would like to basically uh, celebrate and memorialize uh, the first day of school or the first weeks of school. So um, I'll put my website in the chat and the, the shirts will be available on the website um, sometime next week. Thank oh, you. I can't wait. Yes, I'm super excited about that. Thank you for sharing, Denise. And I know we have uh, Kathia. Can you just let me know if I'm saying your name correctly? Is it Kathia? Kathia's right. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Boo. How are you? I'm good. Um, first, thank you to you and Leticia for today. And I actually wanted to share, um, I feel like I was in a similar situation as um, Leticia, where I do a number of speaking engagements and I felt like it just became too tied to my company and that mission. <clears throat> so one of the things that I have is um, my career style, because literally I was thinking about blending my own career with my lifestyle and making that like she said there's no such thing as the balance part just integrating it in a way that it works for me but I will say that the um doing the speaking engagements it did allow me to become a lot more comfortable with being on camera and stuff like that so now that I've been doing a show with my friends called somebody said tv where it's literally just fun and I can talk about whatever and it has absolutely nothing to do with work. Um, so that's what I have going on. Oh, great. I, I, I the, oh, so go ahead, sorry. No, I was gonna say, how to, where do we check it out? Yeah, cause that's what I was gonna ask. I saw it on your page, but I don't know the frequency of when it happens, Kathia. So can you share that? Yes, it's on YouTube. So we actually finished our first season and we plan on starting back up in September and we do every other Thursday at eight. But yes, I can put the link in here. And it, yeah, it is on my Instagram page, but I'll be sure to share with everyone um, once we decide on our first episode for the second season. Yes, please do. Um, Cause you see, you're gonna have some more subscribers and supporters because you should. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm excited to support you in that initiative. Thank you. 
No, problem. I'm sending the link now, to everyone. Okay, awesome. So I wanted to see if there's anyone else, because um, I, I see who's in here, and y'all got I have a lot of great things going on. But if you want to share, you can. If not, then I'll move on to the raffle. The raffle, right? Because I know that's why people are saying because they want to get their <laughs> session with Letitia. <laughs> so anyone else wanted to share anything? If not, I'm going to move forward and do, I have to answer one more name that I see here. Not sure who's on the iPhone, so I just put iPhone in there, in the hat. And for those who don't know, a fun fact, yellow is my favorite color. So I'm going to pull your names, everyone's name is in here, out of the yellow hat. And let's see who's going to have their session with Letitia. It is oh, it too. <laughs> iPhone. Who's on the iPhone? <laughs> uh, is that me, y'all? Is it Priya? I don't know. Yeah, so you're the only one on the iPhone. So yes, Priya. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to somebody else, Crystal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your support, Priya. <laughs> Priya is one of Letitia's best friends, <laughs> and she we su all support one another. So <laughs> we have our chat. <laughs> Say that. She's still on. Tamala, Camelia, sorry. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Letitia. <laughs> no, you want your session with Letitia? <laughs> Yes, I'm so excited. Email me. I will email you. Actually, I'm I'm on my work laptop right now. I'm emailing you anyway. Okay. Um, I'm going to send you another message okay. on top of the email. So I wonder if I can't wait. And for everyone else, I do 15-minute consultations too, um, coffee chats. So those you can um, go to my website and there is an option to select coffee chats too. So if you want to connect with me, you can... If they, if, I usually go longer than 15 minutes. I'm gonna say I'm here for 15 minutes, time, but I usually go 30. But um, so if you're interested um in just learning a bit more and just you know chatting quickly over coffee or tea or whatever, you know, I usually do have a cup in my hand on the Zoom, but um you can check out my website and you can go to services and then you can select coffee chat too if you want to schedule some time with me. But we get the hour career strategy session. So that's going to be amazing. I can't wait. So once you once you email me, I'll send you like the intake form just so I can get the information up front so that we can talk. Um, I'm excited. This comes yeah. at a perfect time. <laughs> right. Because I know we've, we've been talking about. And I will say this. Letitia's giving you more time than we initially discussed. We discussed 30 minutes. She's giving you 60. So you heard it. <laughs> I'm excited. I need this. I thought. Awesome. So I want all of us to stay connected um, in any way that you want to stay connected. Letitia's information will be in a recap email that will come out within the next few days. We will have our next episode on Wednesday, August 18th. And just feel free if there's anything, anything that you need me to share, I it's just a button for me to share it. I, I usually share a lot of things in my stories. Um, sometimes I share it on my wall. Um, so, and then sometimes I share it on my email list too. So I'm here to support because I feel like together we are stronger. I do not believe in a crabs in a barrel mentality. And I just want us all to win. Like you, you'll realize if you're just meeting me, like I'm, a, I'm your cheerleader and I'm your supporter and I have a lot of resources and I know a lot, but if I don't have the answer, I know somebody who knows somebody who will have the answer. So thank you all for attending. I hope you got what you wanted out of this session and you will have the appropriate contact information <laughs> for Letitia if you want to be connected with her and you could always be connected with me via my website, all my social media handles, except for Clubhouse and TikTok, which I'm not on TikTok a lot, but I am on Clubhouse periodically on there. So peace and blessings to everyone i look forward to seeing you again and look forward to supporting you every capacity and thank you leticia for being our guest today thank, thank you for having me you're most welcome bye